What's up everybody? So here at Slant 3D, we have a lot of people come to us with outdoor parts. So we're gonna talk about the solutions of making those pieces around UV resistance. So, not a lot of people know this, but most plastics degrade when exposed to sunlight. Uh, UV radiation, which is what gives you the sunburn, uh, can cause plastics to fade and degrade and embrittle over time, which if you have an application that you wanna mount on the side of a telephone pole, for five or 10 years generally isn't the best thing. So here's the thing, most plastics are actually quite resistant to UV aside from discoloration. Uh, ABS, PETG, both of these materials are resistant. They're not fully resistant, but they're pretty resistant to UV. That's why you see plastic bottles alongside of the road forever. But materials like PLA, um, and other sort of bioplastics like that are not UV resistant. They will fade very quickly, um, but they will hold up outdoors. Uh, people overrate the uh, amount of degradation that can occur with the plastics. They are all plastics. They all have a half-life of a thousand years. So you can place them outdoors and they will last a very long time. It kind of depends on what type of outdoors, but it's okay. Um, as far as UV resistance, the materials that are UV rated are materials like ASA, TPU, um, some nylons, though they're also not great because they do fade very quickly. Um, but again, ABS is also a very good one. But here's the thing. All those materials are fine and they work great, but in mass production, they're not very good materials. ASA is a highly uh, temperamental material to work with, so it's very expensive to mass produce parts with that. FDM is kind of in the similar vein, even though it's a cheaper cost of material. Um, and then the other ones like nylon is uh, much more affordable than ABS or ASA to produce with. But again, you have that fading that comes with it. Um, and there's just, so PETG is very often used for outdoor applications because it has that durability. But there is another solution to this that many people overlook. The features of the raw material are not necessarily what has to be done, used to get a UV resistant part. In the dashboard of your car, many of the parts within your car are not UV resistant. And yet for some reason they hold their color and last for the 20 years of a lifetime of a car. The reason for that is, is that auto manufacturing actually uses UV resistant coatings, which are transparent, but they pr protect the underlying material from UV radiation. And this is literally a rattle cam uh, run across uh, a part. So generally, if we have a client that is seeking high UV resistance, we will try to get them into those UV resistant materials potentially, but depending on cost and parameters of the project, it can be much easier to just print the part in PETG or PLA even, and just coat it with a UV resistant coat. And that will give it the, uh, the resistance that it needs to survive the sunlight. So that's the solutions for kind of doing mass production with UV. You have a lot of materials that are UV resistant and most plastic is able to hold up to the sun for quite a few years. But if you want that really high engineering grade UV resistance, there are particular materials that have that, but then you can also just paint it with a UV resistant coat. Hopefully that was useful guys. Let me know what you think down in the comments and let us know of any other topics that you would like to hear about, about uh, how to manufacture particular types of products with uh, 3D printer farms. Have a great day, everybody.